working with a school the other week, we were looking at uh, percentage attendance uh, and a problem came up to do with the dual, dual registered pupils that were in that school. Basically, the percentage attendance figures were slightly off and it took a long while before I could figure out exactly what was making those percentage attendance figures wrong. But in the end, like I say, it turned out to be the dual registered pupils. So in this little uh, video, I was going to show you some alternative ways of accounting for dual registered pupils uh, in your measures that calculate percentage attendance. So let's recap the more traditional way of calculating the percentage attendance. When we want to calculate the percentage attendance, the key, uh, one of the key figures that we need to know is the count of possible sessions uh, that, the, that the pupils could have been in school for, for any given time period, because that's the bottom figure, if you like, uh, the denominator in the, in the percentage attendance figure. And the way I usually show people to create that particular uh, number is by um, using um, some existing measures. So we have a measure that counts up how many authorised educational activities the pupil's been on, how many present marks, those are the forward slash and the backslash marks, how many unauthorised absences they've had for holidays and things like that, and how many authorised uh, absences they've had. We put them all together and we divide them, or that this forms the bottom line, uh, and on the top line we put the count of authorised educational activities and the count of present marks, divide it by the count of possible marks, and that is our percentage attendance figure, which works very well for almost, almost every school. There's a problem though. Uh, the problem is that some schools who have dual, uh, who have dual registered pupils, we're using the D code here. Uh, here's a list that uh, I ultimately downloaded from the DFE website, which has the statistical meaning of all of these particular marks. So these are all the marks we can enter into the registers. These are the descriptions of the marks. And here's what they mean statistically. So that's why usually the D dual registered marks go in approved educational activity and they count as a present mark and hence they're a possible mark as well. But most schools it turns out who have a, who have a number of dual registered pupils, um, the percentage attendance should be based on not including D for dual registered marks as part of the range of possible marks. So we need to exclude them from that range of possible marks. So here's an alternative way, rather than counting up as we've done here, uh, each present mark like this, here's an alternative way of doing it. And this way I'm indebted to the people at Capita who came up with this alternative way of, of calculating um, the count of possible marks. Um, which is a little bit more flexible and it's also a little bit clearer exactly what it's counting and what it's not counting. So here it is. Let me just make it a little bit bigger here and hopefully you can see that on the screen. So I've called this count possible version two and it uses the calculate command. Uh, and all, but all it's doing basically is counting up the number of roles in the attendance marks table. If you remember the attendance marks table is a very, very long, but very, very thin table, which basically has a copy of every slash mark, every backslash, every hashtag, every dash for a missing mark, everything that's recorded in the registers in this, in this very long table. So what this uh, measure is doing, and it's important that this is a measure as well, this isn't a calculated column, it's a measure. What this is doing is it's calculating how many roles are in that attendance marks table. Uh, but before it calculates it, it's excluding certain marks from the list. So you'll see there's a set of uh, is not equal to statements. That to me says is not equal to. So it's excluding any hashtags. It's excluding any dashes. Hashtags are weekends typically or holidays. Dashes are missing marks. Um, the Y code, well, if we look on here, the Y code is here. It's exceptional circumstances. The X code we've been using a lot recently because of the COVID. Um, so X is normally not required to be in school. And both of these are categorized as attendance not required. So these weren't causing a problem uh, with the D codes. But you'll see there's X, there's Z, which is not on register. And there's the D code that does cause us a problem. And the D code, like I say, is classified as an approved educational activity. So therefore it was being used in the percentage attendance calculations. Here you can see though, it's being excluded. And we can see very clearly that only these marks are being excluded, plus at the bottom, any mark that's actually blank. Can't think of any scenario where a mark would be blank, uh, but nevertheless, there it is. So there we go, that's what it's got. That's what, that's what it's doing. 
Now, you don't have to change your method. If your method's working fine, that's great. You carry on with that. Uh, but it's just something to be aware of. For example, the, the test data I'm working with here, uh, it makes no difference whatsoever to the count of possible sessions, and therefore it's making no difference whatsoever to the percentage attendance figure. I suspect it's only of use for schools who have dual registered pupils. But there we go. Thank you.